This is the top of Exmoor on an extremely cold day, about 25 years ago. I was up there with the film crew to meet Exmoor Ranger Mike Leach and a wonderful, wonderful old gentleman called Stan Curtis, who I interviewed quite a few times over the years. And he was born and bred right in the heart of the moors. Here he is telling us no, no, about his life on Exmoor. Then. I'm ready now. Yeah? Okay, look at that. Poor white mole. Hey, have you ever seen one before? No, I've never seen one before. Yeah, yeah. pretty rare that is. Yeah, Show it to it, the camera it? a bit. Just display it right now. That's it. That's great, great. Give it a little fun, aren't Yeah. Got little hands on them, see? Yeah. But uh, there's different weather here today. Yeah. yeah. That um, gate up with Mike, it's got to do something about that one. He's open more most of his time, you know. He, he well, he opens and shuts all right, but everybody leaves and on apps. I don't know if he can put a spring or something on him. Oh, he was made right down through. I made that one in 19 farmer, uh, 1948. 1948. When uh, Farmer Ari Watts used to have this ground. Right. Um, I was the last one actually to mow this field. And he was put up into a wreck. Well, there's never been mowed since, you know. Is that with horses or? No, it was cut the old standard fortune. Right. Yeah. yeah. Pushed up with horses with a sweep. Yeah. But, but when did you when did you actually last see his horses for ploughing on the estate here? Oh, it would have been early in the fifties. Right. Yeah, because um, well, I, I I am actually ploughed on this estate since the fifties, but I used to plough for. Farmer Thorn out the other end of the village, uh, well, 46, 7 and 8 down. But um, there was a lot of horses here on the local estate. Well, right up to about 1955, oh. there was, uh, they were sort of a little bit behind with the machinery, you know. And <laughs> they'd got several horses about. In, in, in the case of um, why you've got to lay edge, you, you don't want the what we call the steepers, that's the ones that you lay down. Um, you don't want them much more than about four inches around in the bottom, and then you cut down what's called a tongue, slice them down through so that there's still a piece of bark and timber, and, and sort of steadily laying over. Now, as you're pushing them over, steadily weaken the tongue till he's laid down, and then that will heal all over, and that sleeper that's laid down will grow then and then fill in with earth and a um, oh, bit of clatty stuff to fill up the gaps to stop the sheep from running under it. There, there's very few edges that um, have been destroyed around this area and all the edges around here when they, well perhaps there's some that ought to have been done before but there's quite a lot laid on Exmoor today. Um, well, the parks, they, they have a tremendous lot of fences laid. I, I expect you see quite a few more people down here now during the summer, a you know, nice summer day, don't you, Stan? Oh, yes, yeah, so there's a lot more people. One time you could sit in home and you'd hear a car go up and you'd say to yourself, oh, that's Farmer George going home from the pub, but now, well, traffic's on all night long. You know, you're, there's always traffic going up and down. But um, going back to this telling about a making and that I always had a bit of a laugh years ago I was up above Lamecombe there me and me mate was thatching a wreck and um, my brother come along and he got a brand new lighter and he thought he saw I'll warm me up so he said to me he said I think I shall set fire to this lot and I said well it won't burn I said new A won't burn well, it long before I got the flames up under my ladder, coming up under the thatch. And the old farmer, Waskett, he was coming down. He said, I don't know how they fellas work up there. He said, you think the hey, Rick's on fire? He said, he's that hot. <laughs> but t he was burning, you know. It was fire coming up on us. But us managed to get out, and nobody didn't know any of the better for it. <laughs> I, I, and what did, what did you thatch the, the hay ricks with? Well, rushes. You cut rushes, rushes out of find an old buggy yeah. patch. Oh, and oh, like the rushes over there, the other side yeah, of the river. Yeah. yeah, yours go. I have cut rushes there. Yes, yeah. Cut them over there and carry them out and stick them in the awesome cart and take them away. And then 
and uh, you have to make your own spars and the few old chaps used to make their own rope around there years ago but um, us used to buy this your coconut stuff coconut um, rope but made hundreds of our own spars you know What's the biggest difference in your lifetime, Stan? The biggest difference that one single thing has made to the farmer's life here on Exeter? Machinery. Absolute machinery. You know, like years ago, well, only going back to when the 1948 blizzard was, well, us, c us couldn't get out. Us was in here for weeks and weeks and weeks. Us used to walk to Axford cross country and get the provisions in, and well, right on this spot, you know, us used to, uh, well, in the end, I said helicopter come in there. Right. But um, since that, you know, machinery have made everything that much easier. I don't care how much snow is getting now, because well, us just go up and get a loader and keep driving, and mm -hmm. you can get through it now with all the modern gear it's about. Council comes out here sometimes. <laughs> what about machinery and the everyday life of the farmer? Can you give us some examples how that's changed it? I, I suppose back in, say, 1950, how, how many men were employed on the Fortescue estate then? Oh, there was about 20. 20 was about, about the limit. You know, there was two or three stockmen and tractor drivers. And I used to have two gangs of four that was fencing all the time, repairing fences and wire fences, laying fences, and uh, but now it has got back, you know, there's it only two or three books there and uh, most of that is tractor work, feeding yeah, stock yeah. during the winter and getting feed during the summer, that's, that's what it boils down to now. And I suppose a big difference in, in the sort of modern winter is that the, the stock come in, don't they, the, the sheep actually yeah, come in for Yeah, most of it's in now, because like, well, years ago they used to have the old, um, well, everybody got Exmoor Orns and um, old Red Devons, you know, and... Uh, They're all local breeds, aren't they? So then, when they started bringing them indoors, uh, they found out that cattle with Orns on was a, a bit of a nuisance, and they started bringing in the continental breeds, cause, so they could get more cattle in a small space, and and then in the case of the sheep, well, Exmoor Orn was a pretty little sheep and very hardy and didn't take too much feed but um, you couldn't sell the lambs. They got too fat. Right. You know, yeah. time you got them heavy enough they was too fat. And of course the, the modern housewife doesn't like well, fat on the Housewife yeah. rules the market. Yeah, mm. I, I want to buy it if it's too fat so uh, you got to breed stuff that they'll buy. So well, about, there's a few red dubbins about and uh, there's a few Exmoor orange, so there's a farmer up on the top where he he keeps nothing else but red devils and uh, he got they all tied up by the neck like they used to years ago, you know, mm. but uh, there isn't the money on bike. Most of them's in a big shed now with cubicles and that and, and uh, well, animals of all colours now. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I was born only just up the road, a little place called Proven Rocks. There's, uh, I think that was mentioned a fair bit in um, R.D. Blackmore's Lorna Doom book, wasn't it? Um, sorry about Club Marx, the car was going to end up in a bug or something. And <laughs> then I went to Simmons Bar School here and uh, well, born and bred here all my life. How many other children were at the school when you went there? There was about, fo about 40 when I left her. Yeah. 40? Where did they all come from? I mean, there's, there's the. Well, it's to, 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 to a hell of a big parish, actually, you know. Yeah. Although you don't see very yeah. many people here. They used to come in from Warren, the boys out there used to ride ponies in. And uh, up where the National Park got their um, toilets now, that used to be stables. And they used to put their ponies in there, and uh, the Thorn boys, they used to ride ponies from Asha, um, how much? Well, uh, can I ask you what your, your, your own father did for, for a living? He was a, sh he, he, father was a shepherd on the estate. Well, more or less most of his life. He, he was tied up with farm work before he come here, and then uh, he was a shepherd out the Dude Valley for well, 15 or 20 years, I suppose. He drove horses on the state. He well, done more or less anything that come along. Yeah, well, uh, the forest estate when I started was um, was about 24,000 acres. Well. Unfortunately, Lord and Lady Fortescue died within a week of each other, and there was a lot of death duties to pay. And so they sold off all Larkborough and Tomfield, the uh, Exmoor National Park, 
Well, and then uh, as things progressed, there was other bits sold off, and then in 1991, I suppose it was, they sold four and a half thousand acres of all this moorland to the Exmoor National Park. And uh, now Folly School Estate, I suppose, has got back what is below 10,000 acres now, sort of, well, all good ground. They haven't got no more ground at all. Mm -hmm. Stan was standing here in the snow. I bet you remember a few pretty bad old blizzards up here on top, don't you? Oh yeah, sort of. Uh, I know in, um, I believe it was, yes, yeah, it would have been 1948, us was up, well, clearing the snow on the, what is called Gallinose Plain between here and next Ford. And I was working nights and I was cleaning the same piece of road, oh, it must have been for I suppose two months and the other chap that was driving the bulldozer he would work at the day and then the, uh, I would do the same piece again in the night because keep blowing in blocking the roads again. So that was the wind blowing it? Was that it, was, was the wind blowing it, probably what was yeah. falling it was uh, yeah. What's the, what's the longest that you've been I say cut off up here at Simmons Bay for? I think, as small as I can remember, it was 48, that, that was for about 13 weeks then, before any traffic come in, you know, um, we, we haven't been really cut off because we've managed, well, a gang of us would get out and walk to Exford and that and get our provisions, but, um, but for vehicles getting in the village, it was about 13 weeks in 1948. So you, you needed to go into Exford to walk the shop or whatever it is. That's there, right, to, yeah, to, well... To get your provisions. You, try, you weren't stocked up well enough here. Well, bang day days, you see there wasn't no electric here, you hadn't got no deep freezes. Well, uh, no, you, you think you're so right, well, I will get someone in, get the deep freeze filled in sort of in autumn and then you're ready. Down to salt in those days I suppose. That boat was all salt, yeah, put it in the salt or kill the peg and, and salt it in. Well, there's a limitation to what you can do with that. The, uh, now a lot of people watching this in the future might think, well, Christ, he's standing there in a snow field, it looks cold, and there's a hard old life up on top. Do you think it's a hard old life? It, has it been a hard life for you? No, no, beautiful life. Know yeah, <laughs> yeah, beautiful life. Yeah, it is, it is cold and wet, it is nice to go off for more. I went in the mine yesterday and there's daffodils in there, well, they're over, but up in my garden they're only just poking through the ground. Different you know, world, a different world up Completely here. different world, yeah. Do you think it needs a, a different sort of person to live up here? I think it helps to be somebody that's a bit tough and don't know any better, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Dear I, old I Stan Curtis, I have fond memories of him and I'll try and dig out some more footage of him very soon. <laughs>